Welcome to the Modern Application Development 2 screencast. In this screencast, we'll see how to set up you in a simple Flask app. Uh, to follow along, you would need a terminal, browser, editor, and Python setup or a Flask project setup. We are going to use the same Flask project that we used before. Uh, we're going to improve this uh, same application. Now, this is a simple approach in which we we'll, are going to bring in uh, the view as a library just like any other library and we are going to use it along with our HTML or Jinja template. Let me just write a simple diagram to show uh, let's say this is your whole flask app and you know uh, within that you have um, your uh, Jinja templates and you have your static files and you have your APIs and other things here right um, okay now the APIs are accessible but the other logic is not directly accessible now let's say if you have a browser here uh, when it accesses a URL you know what usually happens is you know your Jinja templates get rendered um, and sent to the front end right it's get rendered and sent to front end as HTML content right and this HTML content can also load some uh, static files for example images JS files CSS files etc etc uh, this is your uh, browser and an HTML page right and now you know let's say there was a small part within which you know you are doing some Ajax calls to APIs and stuff um, you would have called APIs and you would have used directly this is what like a map that is simple and we what we have been developing until now now let's say we want to introduce view into it uh, in a simple approach view sits along with your uh, other static um, files for example we are going to load along with let's say js and css we are going to also load uh, view specific js and uh, view components let's see and you know uh, i'm going to remove this part let's say you wanted to add reactivity to this part of the application then we could use this view view component here and then this can make actually call to APIs that like we have taught. Now you see it's an hybrid approach. We have server side rendering of Jinja templates and sending it and then there is a client side rendering of this view component using data from APIs. Um, this has several advantages and several uh, some disadvantages and also there are good use cases where this could be a way to do it. For example, if we take the advantages, it's simple. Uh, we are going to use uh, view components and view only where it is required. Otherwise, we'll stick it to server-side rendered uh, HTML pages. Uh, the deployment is simple because everything is together. Uh, you're going to deploy everything together. And uh, uh, development is also st straightforward because you know uh, we are going to have all the code together and it's a single uh, project. So the, if if the team is smaller, it becomes easier to maintain uh, and develop and deploy. Now, since all of it lives on the same server uh, and probably served through the same URL, uh, the Ajax calls or or the calls to the APIs or fetch calls can actually be based on cookie based authentication we don't need to go for a token based authentication now cookie based authentication is much more simpler to manage uh, than a token based uh, authentication also this gives us an opportunity to mix and match like for example uh, in certain cases we want to use uh, server side rendering and in some cases we want to use client side rendering uh, this gives us an opportunity to uh, mix where uh, we want to do that right um, so that that's the, uh, the those are the advantages now cons um, is like you know you need to import view uh, in every uh, Jinja template wherever you want to use it like you have to manually import them or you have to write a base template 
uh, where will you import and all the places where you want to uh, use a view then uh, all those Jinja templates have to uh, uh, extend that base template. Um, some of the CLI tools of view um, you might bring uh, you know more uh, optimization and you know ease of use or ease of development and um, that won't be available in this case because we're not going to use CLI in this case. Now where is it useful where would we go for this approach um this approach is useful for simple applications and like you know where you want everything to live together or uh, a team uh, which is small and wants to achieve a bit faster without actually depending on many toolings um, and then it's also good for apps where you had actually added traditional app just standard Jinja based and you want to uh, migrate to a new app setup and you want to don't want to do big band approach you want to migrate parts of the app um, you also useful where you don't want reactivity in the whole app you want reactivity in certain parts of the app in certain widgets of the app so hence you know in that case it's uh, you can use this it's also um, useful uh, where you don't want to specifically make single page apps you know there are cases um, you know where uh, single page apps are not idle for example when high accessibility is required uh, it's preferred to use multiple page apps and add reactivity only when in there is a required um, place in required places instead of for the whole app um, maybe it's useful in those cases so let's uh, try and do uh, one simple example of uh, you know wiring all of this together to see how it looks uh, let's go back to the project. I have already set up and running the project. So if I go to 8080, we have the project. Now let's say we had a sidebar here and we want to load a widget here, which does something, you know, based on view. I'm not going to do anything special here. I'm just going to display a message on the sidebar uh, within uh, using view within our gen using both Jinja template and view. Uh, just to show how it can all be brought together right but then you can say for example use a specific view component for this thumbs up icon only and then you know you have to code it once and you can just use it everywhere things like that you can do right let's start with um, creating a going to our static folder just like bootstrap let's create a new folder called view now you can also self uh, use a view from CDN or you can self host view. It's up to you. Uh, we can add it into a view folder and use it or you can actually, you know, use a, a CDN. Let's uh, go here. Okay, go to the view installation folder. If I was going to use CDN, I was going to use this or I can use a, a production version download it i'm just going to use the currently just the cdn version right otherwise you could have downloaded that here for example let's we'll try that okay uh, let's save it So we have view min.js. Now um, in our main, uh, we are loading the index file from controllers. So if we go to controllers, the index page uh, is articles.html. So let's modify articles.html, which is a Jinja template in our case. Um, template articles.html. So we just need to import our view that file but i'm just going to import it instead of copy pasting the whole thing okay from the static instead of from the js it'll be view and view dot min dot js 
Now the other thing that we need to do is to create our an app.js, right? All our uh, view app is in the app.js. You can call it anything, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to uh, call it app.js, right? Uh, new file. Oh, this file is not required. Um, app.js is going to write simple uh, view app. Okay. Um, that's going to just print uh, hello world from you um, and is going to use a div with ID this uh, app. Okay. Now we wanted to put it in the sidebar um, here, the sidebar. So let's uh, open up the sidebar. Let's see where the sidebar comes from. If you see our article, so side sidebar comes from sidebar HTML. Let's go edit that sidebar HTML. So ideally what we would do, we'll put MSG, right? We all know how in this is our um, standard view template. And then uh, in our uh, main articles, we need to import or include our um, app.js, right? Uh, there's no view inside, it's inside JS and app.js. Now let's see what happens if we run this. So the one thing that we are not done is a setting up of an uh, app. We can set it up at the highest level. Uh, I'm just going to make container itself first called to app. Right, that's the other thing that we need to do. It still won't load. Right, it still won't show. Why is that? Why is that happening? That's because here in our sidebar HTML, we're actually um, trying to put the template and we are assuming this is going to be a uh, template uh, for our view. But uh, we also know that even uh, Jinja uses the same format for uh, printing out the variables. So it's actually here when it first gets rendered on the server, uh, even before it's sent to the client, uh, it kind of uh, already tries to render message, which is null. So it won't do anything. Uh, we can just uh, uh, do to do actual rendering of this to client. So it has to have this exact you know uh, value sent to the client as html and then it should get rendered at the client side which means it has to be sent raw without this part shouldn't be rendered on the server side only this part should be rendered on the server side how do you do that uh, jinja actually gives you that uh, that uh, exact you know feature called uh, raw and uh, end raw uh, using these tags whatever um, you know that confuses jinja will be sent raw to the front end and that gets rendered uh, you know as like text by the front end and if it's a jinja uh, you know view template it gets you know uh, rendered as view uh, that's called actually escaping so we're going to add this tag so it gets uh, escaped as jinja from the Jinja and then gets rendered only in the front end, right? Uh, let's put end draw. Okay. I'm just gonna add it inside a P or paragraph so it's uh, clearer. Okay, now let's uh, refresh our page. There you go. Now it's actually rendered from view, uh, but when it HTML is sent, HTML actually sends the um, the actual unescaped uh, or rather escaped raw uh, uh, this part raw message variable, right? Now this is a lot of work, you know, to do this all that time, right? Um, and then there's a good chance that you will miss out as well. Uh, the the luck part is, you know, um, 
view allows you to set up your own um, uh, delimiters for the variables. We can set up, you know, one which is almost like ES6 templating, uh, like this. Instead of double quote double flower bracket, you can use dollar and flower bracket, right? Once you give these delimiters, and uh, since this doesn't have any specific meaning in Jinja, uh, it should be fine without the raw, right? So I'll remove this remove this now uh, Jinja template variable will look like this correct now if I refresh it will still stay right if I remove this it will go right and this will come back so you know either you can use escaping in Jinja or use uh, delimiters right i usually use delimiters because it makes um, you know whenever you look at jinja template you clearly know that this is client side rendered uh, dollar you know who starts with dollar and uh, whatever with a regular jinja template actually rendered on the server side so it makes it very clear and easy to code now we've got reactivity to this um, this part of the page you could do something similar for other parts of the page or whole page um, you could you know like we have learned before you can go ahead and improve this and add a fetch request to it all of that you know you can define components and in use components inside uh, you can mix and match all of it and it's quite powerful uh, when you mix both uh, you know server side rendering and uh, client side rendering uh, that's it thank you for watching